Welcome to Motion Design. My name is Jorge Rolando Estrada, also known as Janist. I'm an animator and creative director. I've had the privilege of working at companies like Buck, Dynand, and Oh, damn. We thought it's going to work, but there was no sound. There we go. <clears throat> I hope you guys can hear me now, though. Um, I'll welcome everyone. Uh, we have we have one and only Jorge uh, Estrada joining us today. We also have co-hosting us <clears throat> Andrew Horlick. Yo. Hi, how's everyone doing? I hope everyone's doing great. <clears throat> I'm happy to see so many people joining us today. And this is, this is a special day uh, because we are basically showing you guys the new course, the new course on Learn Squared. Um, we wanted to play a trailer. For some reason, it just decided to not play any sound, but that's something we're just trying out and testing. Um, Do you want to play it again? <laughs> yeah, let's see if it works yeah. again. I'm, I'm actually curious. Yeah, um, go for it. I'm actually they said curious. they could hear it at the end, too. Right, I'm going to play the animation. They might be able to hear that. Let's start with introductions, um, Jorge, because you are the man of an hour. <laughs> Maybe Yo. let's start with you. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yep. Good. Sweet. Um, hi. Wow, there's a bunch of people in there already. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so where do we start? What do you, um, where do we start? Let's talk I about guess myself. just, yeah, introduce who you are. Like, who are <laughs> yeah. you, Jorge? Who am I? Uh, okay, my name is Jorge Rolando Canelo Estrada. Um, I sometimes go online by the silly nickname that I started, JR Canist. Um, the video audio is loud. Um, but um, yeah, I, I am a motion designer. I've been working in the industry for about, officially for about six, seven years almost. And um, I started motion design kind of just for fun playing around with after effects when i discovered that you could do cool stuff with after effects um after playing a bit with with flash which was actually the very first thing i animated ever was with flash um and after that i i kind of learned most of the stuff that i knew online with different tutorials and you know old forums online so that was a cool um cool way to get introduced with with motion especially as i'm doing now a course that it kind of like going back to the roots of how i learned everything so that's that's really exciting um but after kind of like learning on my own and doing a lot of really bad stuff um i was doing some stuff for friends i was doing some stuff for my church like nothing quite official and it wasn't very good but uh at that time i didn't think i could actually make a living out of this or i, I don't know for some reason i didn't 
because I, it wasn't there wasn't a career on the college that I was looking at up that it was anything with animation. I went for industrial design actually, and six months in, I got a scholarship. There was like a competition with VFS um, to make a little animation, and you could get a scholarship to learn motion design basically. So I did a video, and I actually won alongside with two other incredibly talented guys. Um, so I left industrial design, and um, moved to Vancouver where I, I live now, and um, kind of did this one year course, uh, which was which was great in many ways, mostly just my classmates, um, but the program always left me wanting much more. And most of the problems that I've seen out there always kind of like leave me wanting more. So uh, after being in the industry, after that I was at Buck, um, a motion design studio in Los Angeles. I was working there for a year as an animator. And after that I moved back to Vancouver and um, started working at this studio called Giant Ant. And I started as an animator, well, then art director, then eventually became a creative director, uh, well, associate creative director. And after f almost five years, um, decided to go freelance. And around that time, Ash kind of was bugging me with the idea, hey, you should teach something. <laughs> I'm like, well, I've always, I've always wanted to teach something, but I'm, I don't know if I'm very good at it. And anyway, he convinced me to do this because, you know, what better way to, you know, even though I see a lot of things missing in the, system of motion design school wise one of the best ways to actually do something about it was to make a class so that's kind of how it it all happened and that's how i'm here and presenting you the class that i wish i had taken back in the day yeah <clears throat> i had a privilege to start taking your class i'm second in line as apprentices we're going to talk about rafael in a second uh but gotta say uh when i'm when I was watching the video um, content that you've been created, that you've cre created, and you know, and how you explain things, it was, it was almost like listening to a podcast or an audiobook. You know, uh, the way you <laughs> articulate ideas and the way you articulate things in the course itself. Uh, it's been like really refreshing because I was like, it was like a curveball for me. I wasn't expecting that. Right. Um, because every, <clears throat> every of our instructors is obviously different and every one of us has a different teaching style. Um, but that was like really interesting uh, experience because the way you laid out the class and the way you've been teaching it, I would say it's very, it, it came very natural for you. You're, you know, I, I, I gotta say without a shadow of a doubt, you're an amazing teacher. I've been learning a oh, lot. Thanks, I, I, I gonna have a couple of words about how I'm, why I'm taking motion design class myself, even though I'm a concept artist. Uh, I think a lot of people might be interested in, in hearing that. Um, <clears throat> maybe let's talk about uh, your apprentice uh, now in the, for, for a second. Raphael is not with us here today, but um, I'm pretty sure we can talk about uh, a little bit about him, who is Raphael. Yeah, actually, before we talk to Raph uh, about Raphael, um, one thing that you mentioned, and <laughs> I think that the fact that I was kind of like, I felt so inadequate in many ways to do the class forced me to do such a long research and preparation uh, that I pretty much like wrote down the entire hour lessons. Like I have massive spreadsheets because I was like, I don't know what I'm talking about. So I need to make sure that it makes sense. Right. <laughs> so I think that, that, that in the end actually like, I don't know, made the course even better than I thought it was going to end um, because there was so much like thinking and like studying even on my own end to make sense of the entire process. So mm -hmm. so it's cool that you notice that because it, it was a lot of work and a lot of um, love put into, it, put into it. So hopefully everybody sees that. But uh, yeah, Rafael. So Rafael Mayani, um, he's this Mexican graphic designer um, who lived in Barcelona for a while. And now he, uh, the reason why I know him is because he is currently working at Giant Ant, where I was working um, mm -hmm. before going freelance. And uh, he's incredibly talented guy. Like a lot of the, the things, even in my reel, are designed by him. And I only kind of directed the animation and did all the animation. Oh, that's um, interesting. In his website, yeah, in his website, you see most of his illustrative work, which is kind of like what he likes to do the most. Um, and that, like he's right now illustrating a jungle book, um, I don't know like on the side like he's incredibly talented illustrator but it, he also has like this very good eye for design um right but he hasn't really 
ever animated anything. Um, I mean, he's done a little cell, like frame by frame animation here and mm -hmm. there. But um, so when I um, when I thought I was like, who could be interesting to kind of like take the scores? And I thought of um, Raphael because like he is right now, he is kind of like a motion design um, illustrate. Like he's known in the motion design industry. Um, and yet he doesn't really know how to do motion design, like the actual animation side of things. So I thought it would be a, um, a cool person to, to bring in, and he seemed very excited about it. Um, and yeah, um, the, the stuff that he came up with is is really cool. One thing about Raphael that I've always liked is not only his illustration style and his ability to, to come up with this cool visuals, but um, he's always had like ideas for how things should animate, um, but he's never been able to actually put them to you know, real animation. Right. Um, so I was like, okay, well, if you have the ideas and you can learn the execution, hopefully something amazing comes out. Yeah, as you guys can see, I'm cycling through images that he's been creating uh, through his portfolio. And I, you can tell he's an amazing illustrator for sure. Like the, the style of the, of the work is really interesting. And I had a chance to look into um, his journey that he did for the class, uh, which we're going to get into a little later. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's been like, yeah, it's, I can totally, I can totally see the sense of it, you know, the way he's uh, utilizing his, uh, artistic style into the motion that you've been teaching. So that's, uh, that's been great. Um, and, um, obviously myself, uh, I, I guess, uh, everyone who's joining us, uh, knows who I am already, uh, for those who just accidentally stumbled upon the stream, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I am. Machi Kuchara, basically, concept artist in film and video games, and uh, been in this industry for over a decade now, uh, working for games such as Crisis, The Last of Us, uh, films as um, Captain America, Civil War, X-Men, Days of Future Past, and whatnot. So my background is primarily illustration and concept art. and. I'll tell you why I was really excited. I've been hinting that for a while now. Um, why I'm excited about this is I've always wanted to do motion stuff and not necessarily motion per se, like just when you, when you go on the websites like graphic design websites or motion design websites, when you see those interesting motion designs, like in this trailer right here, they're going to play in a second, but, um, now the the things they are teaching are really cool, but the I I see an absolutely different application to uh, how this could be used in concept art as well. So that was like, damn, I gotta take this class because <laughs> if 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 it is what I'm expecting, it is then uh, it, it's gonna be really interesting to to see the results that you know I could possibly come uh, come with uh, after taking this class. And I can tell you, I'm I'm second lesson in. I'm already sort of finished the second lesson, so I'm kind of halfway in. I know it's just getting started, um, but it's already like the amount of the amount of knowledge that I soaked in, the way you explain everything uh, in terms of the animation, the background of animation, the history, and also your thought process for animation. It's basically what made this for me to be really really powerful because I have an idea for what I'm going to do for the last lesson. And I think a lot of people are going to be surprised how you can use <laughs> it. And from the angle of concept artists, uh, I would say mm, this is really, really powerful stuff. So, um, yeah. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, you, you mentioned that because, um, I mean, one thing about motion design that probably a lot of people realize is that it's so incredibly broad. Like, anything can be motion design at this point. And, um, you know, like, like this is a motion design focused kind of look on the animation, but, and like exploring the possibilities of motion design, but the actual output of it, it can be applied to so many different styles and right. like completely different that, that like that, that, that piece that, that you just plays for played, for example, and depending kind of on your background, it will really define what that uh, is going to look like, but like the idea of the principles might be the same, but the entire the result can be completely different. And um, like I'm really like based on the stuff that 
we already seen coming from you. Um, like I'm super excited to see your perspective on on the course and like just hearing you that mm-hmm. that you have something unexpected for your final project. Like I, I just can't wait for it because like it can be applied in so many different things and it doesn't have to end up being you know like just little shapes. I kind of chose that because it's kind of like the simple um, and basic way to start, but then you can take it anywhere really. All right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I'm I'm super excited. I just cannot wait. I'm like halfway in and it, like. I need more time. <laughs> I won't have more time to get get really deep into it, you know, because um, it's kind of funny because your your class, the 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 the, mom, the moment we uh, we you know we connected together to talk about uh, you possibly teaching for Learn Squared was uh, the moment I realized, damn, like motion design, what is that in the first place? And then when I looked at your uh, your portfolio when I looked at what you did in your um, in your uh, reel and then the outline that you presented like okay this is this is exactly what we're gonna do for this class I was like damn like I really want to take it because I'm already having projects right now I'm working for clients that knowing what I know is already useful for me to to apply it to commercial work basically even though I know very little I have no experience whatsoever but just the fact that I can take something that I do and put put some things in motion and show it to the client, that's already so powerful. And I expect it for our clients as well because what they do expect from me is just like, all right, this is just going to be a concept. And then I send this. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's totally an added value to any, any, any type of work that you do, really, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, let me try to play the trailer again. See if it works. See if uh... yeah, play with audio. Also known as Chanist, I'm an animator, creative director. I've had the privilege of working at places like Buck, Line and I don't know. There's something going on that it audio doesn't want to play for whatever reason. Anyways, we can we can talk over. Uh the trailer yeah, is I mean the trailer, yeah, if fine. anyone wants to see it, is on the site. If you just go to learnsquared.com slash motion design, uh it's the first thing on the top up. So all the audio should be working in there. I guess Twitch has decided to be difficult for us. But um <laughs> A lot of questions are popping up about like what's covered in the course, so I guess now might be a good time to just go to the course page and scroll through those. Exactly. Those four Let me lessons. Disable that trailer for a second, and I'll go to course page. Course page. You can you can see the um, the URL right here. If you just follow that, you can play the trailer with the sound and everything. Uh, I gotta repeatedly play the trailer uh, every now and then, so for you guys to see the visuals of exactly what the course is about, but. Yeah, I agree. Let's jump into um, what what is this course about exactly? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I guess should we mention that uh, we'll be answering all those because I know a lot of questions are popping up, but we'll yeah. make sure to Andrew passes on later on. But um, hopefully, this clarifies a lot of, a lot of the questions. So, um, and actually, the way I broke it down, it it kind of took quite a bit of thinking and reshuffling because the way I wanted to break down the four. Um, for the four lessons where it kind of progressively is how a project would normally go. Um, so like kind of like the big overview is that at the beginning, we're kind of just getting excited about motion and understanding what it is really and kind of defining it. Um, and based on that definition, the next three courses are, are based on basically, um, which I will, I will explain a little bit about it um, in a bit. And then the second, um, the second lesson is basically focused on applying uh, principles of animation, which are based on the principles of uh, the 12 principles of character animation that some of you might know. Um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that too. And then three and four are, you know, that now, so now that we've learned kind of like the basics of the principles of animation and some After Effects, even though, even whether you know After Effects or you've never opened it before, kind of lesson two covers most of it. Um, and then on three and four, we're developing a project from start to finish, uh, to start to finish, which is um, the little project that um, you see 
up in the site or was well, not on the app in the site yet, but you will see it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like more specifically uh, on lesson one, um, I kind of did my own take on the history of motion design. And it's based on a lot of things that, I, that I've seen around it. Mostly because like the history of motion design is very closely linked to the history of just animation in general. And a lot of people think it's the same, but I actually do think that there's certain times and periods that really make it stand out as its own art form, I guess, um, separated from from regular classical animation. So I kind of break down a bit and show some of my favorite pieces. A lot of them kind of like focus on more abstract um, and and playing with, you know, like a lot of people think motion design is like a pretty early and pretty new type of medium and it actually isn't really it's been around for for quite a quite a while and i show some of my very favorite early uh, pieces there and then i actually i also went through like i recognize that um you know I, even though i've been doing this for a while there's so many people that i admire in the field so i actually tried to kind of like poke their brains a bit and there's there's kind of like some mini interviews that I did with some of my favorite motion designers, which I also kind of like put that in the lesson, which they were kind enough to to let me put it in there. So that was really cool. Um, and then that's kind of like the intro and the history and getting you excited about motion. And then I tried to define what motion design is. Um, and that one is a pretty tricky thing to do. Like I mentioned earlier, like there's so much that can be defined as motion design. So the way I kind of like to describe it and then, you know, when I when I come here and talk to school to some students, um, just for like a little workshop or whatever, I try to tell them that a lot of what motion design makes motion design. It's um, not necessarily the end product, but the process of it and the different parts and what makes that piece um, came about. So I talk a little bit about that, which kind of like breaks down the parts of motion, which I like to put in four parts: the story, the design, the audio, and the animation. Um, and those four points are basically the structure of the rest of the class. Um, and then that's kind of like for for lesson one. And like to finish lesson one, to not leave it just with theory, I, it's kind of like a fun little flash animation or Adobe animation um, exercise there frame by frame. And we don't really dig too much. We don't really dig much at all in, in frame by frame, but that's kind of like a fun exercise to get everybody excited right at the bat without having to wait too much to to get your hands dirty into animating. Um, for lesson two, um, it's kind of divided in two parts as well. The first part is, like I mentioned, we talked about the principles of, of motion design. And um, a lot of, you know, the, the principles of mo uh, the principles of animation I ta are talked about a lot, especially now for people who might be involved with animation and so on. Um, and there's, these are 12 principles that were written in the, in the book by some of the Disney geniuses, um, the illusion of life. Uh, but what I did basically was kind of did my own take on those principles and apply them into motion design specifically. Um, so kind of those principles were made mostly for character animation. And since we are not touching character animation in this class, because that's kind of like a class on its own, um, I kind of like use those principles to apply them to, to the things that we'll be, we'll be needing and, and learning. So using kind of like more simpler shapes and more simple principles. Um, so that's kind of like half of that lesson. And then and then the second part of, of, of lesson two is is After Effects. Like we, we dig in right into After Effects and I kind of try to give an overview of the software. And like I mentioned, if, even if you've never opened After Effects, you should be able to get a pretty good idea. Uh, if you know After Effects, I mean, you could, even skip that whole section uh, if you're like a pro, but there's always little <laughs> shortcuts that I wish I had learned um, that are incredibly useful. So I would, even even if you know the software, I would still recommend to kind of like go through these because there's so many little things that, uh, and I'm, I'm sure there's still so much that I need to learn, but those are very useful for your workflow and so on. I agree with um, you 100%. Yeah, on like, that matter. like there's always so much that you can learn. Like I still, when I, you know, I consider myself pretty good at After Effects, but when I sit next to some of my coworkers or people that, you know, that I really admire their work, all of a sudden they're like showing me all this crazy stuff. I'm like, what? That could have seen me like three hours. <laughs> so 
so it's like super um, helpful for, for, for both beginners and people that might be having some experience with the software already. Um, and then in that lesson, we kind of like do a little exercise on, on just simple animation, kind of like a, like a little sequence of like a jump. And we talk about the principles, applying all the principles that we, we talked about then. And that kind of like divides the entire class. Like that was kind of like the, I don't know how you like, we haven't started with our project at that point. Yeah. And then on lesson three, that's where we kind of jump right in. And uh, we start talking about like, if you remember kind of like talking about the idea that motion design is this four part is like the story, the design mm -hmm. and the animation and the audio, like lesson three focuses on the concept, the story and um, the design. So kind of like the first two areas, which I think they're incredibly important and defining for every motion piece. So we, we kind of go through that like from the very beginning of the project, like what is this project going to be? We come up with a concept kind of based on a quote, we start mocking a bunch of things, sketching. I show you my process of sketching and, you know, I warn you, I'm not very good at drawing, but like you kind of get the idea <laughs> of, of how, yeah. how I come up <laughs> with, with some ideas. Um, and, and then we kind of go through the same process that I would go through if I was working for a client or if I was doing a project of my own. So like, we start with mood boards and references and storyboards and sketches and things like that. Um, and then style frames, which is like a design frame of the final piece. So that's kind of lesson three, quite focused on, on you know, now we're full on with, with our final project, you could call it. And then lesson four, um, that's kind of like the heavy one. And even though it says like it's it's four hours long, it's, it's because I didn't want to leave too many gaps of me just like, Oh yeah, and for this part we're just gonna animate it like this, and then come back and it was done. So I tried to like putting in actually me doing the entire project from, mm -hmm. you know, from start to finish. Um, so a lot of of lesson four is me just messing around with After Effects and making mistakes and and trying to fix it and applying all these designs and putting them, putting movement to them, um, and then finalizing the entire animation. In lesson four we also talk a little bit about audio and mostly because I'm a, bit obsessed with audio and I just feel like every motion piece <laughs> needs good audio. So we talked a little bit about that um, at the beginning and and that's kind of it. So like along the way, there's all these principles, there's all these um, tips and tricks, but it's mostly like an overview of motion design and finishing a project from A to Z. Nice, that's a good breakdown. Actually, it's a good yeah. moment to step into and maybe play the final animation again so that people yeah. can yeah. actually watch it. I'm just going to turn down the audio on that one so it's not too distracting as so we can keep continue talking. Um, one, of the, one of the aspects I wanted to mention as this animation plays um, is how important it is to not to skip actually. Because as you mentioned, like if you're, if you, you already know After Effects, uh, maybe you could skip it. I would, I would suggest not to. The reason is simple. <laughs> yeah. Even though I could consider myself expert in Photoshop, I've been using it for for a decade, over a decade, and I can tell I know a lot, but I don't know any, I like everything. There's always a one tiny little thing that you're gonna yeah. discover somewhere along the way that all of a sudden like, damn, I've been wasting so much time doing this manually, whereas I can just, <laughs> there's just like automatic way of doing it and even doing it better. <laughs> you know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. So that kind yeah. of stuff is... That kind of stuff is when uh, we're, you know, it's all right. You should not skip it for sure because yeah, no, that that's a very good point. And I remember even in in school we had like random motion classes. Like it wasn't a motion course. Um, and when they kind of like went through those things, like most things that we wanted to know, like a lot of us kind of watched Andrew Kramer showing how to do. Uh, like After Effects a little bit and a lot of us wanted to just know how to be efficient and like little shortcuts here or how to like cut layer here move things like that and and I think that's a very good point you make because like throughout the video I'm just doing all those and you can see all the uh, keystrokes that I'm clicking and stuff and um, even those I wish like there's some that I just learned like last month and I wish I had learned like four years ago because <laughs> it's just so useful so yeah, yeah. That, that's a very good point for sure so that was the final animation. I, I'm actually, I think I have uh, your apprentice animation here too. Might play that yeah. one as well. Let's see. Let's see which one's that? That's the journal, right? I think that's 
Well, that's the journey. That's going to be like the whole yeah. real time thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another thing that it's good to mention is that all the apprentices, uh, as apprentices, we all record our our learning process as we go. So everything is basically all the mistakes that we make along the way. It's all here. Like you can watch and see how we struggle with finding out what works and what doesn't. And uh, and basically, you know, figuring out, all right, what 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 we can do to get the final animation ready and going. So, yeah, let's see if I can. How's it going? Pretty. Let's see if I can find the actual final animation. I don't think it's here. Um, I'll find it in a second. I'll play the trailer in the meantime. Welcome to Motion Design. My name is... Yeah, and, and with Raph, it's also uh, with Raphael. He, um, he I, like, I, the funny thing is, like, I could talk to him throughout the week because we were kind of in the same city. And it was funny to, like, he was like, oh, man, there's so many mistakes in my recordings. And I'm like, that's great, man. Like, like part of the reason why we, we have his example is so, so people realize that, you know, like, you know, like, even though I might be fairly quick, that's because I've been doing it for like six years and I like mm. after effects is like second nature, but you can see that, you know, it's still quite like, like trial and error and all the times, um, trying to put what you had in your mind into the actual animation and the actual final result. And, and sometimes it won't quite turn out the way you expected. Sometimes it'll turn worse. Sometimes it'll turn out better, but that's just part of it. And you'll just keep doing it and making it great. Yeah. Um, one thing I like, I also wanted to mention about lesson four is that because the end goal is to finish your animation and, you know, like based on the times that we have, like, it's very possible that you won't be able to like completely finish your animation in, in, in that one week. Um, but you still like, like the idea is that you keep doing this stuff and, and you come up with a cool piece. So like you, you have to be smart about how complex you want to go. Um, like. Because if, if you if you go too crazy in your first attempt, it might be completely overwhelming. So you kind of be, be smart about like, okay, I'm going to start here and then you keep growing and making it better and better. Um, and even if you're not 100% done by the end of lesson four, you can still like finish it in the next couple of days and post it and start a new one and keep going. Yeah. Okay, I found it. It's right here. I'm going to play. It's just a five second animation. It's obviously much smaller than uh the final animation you did for the class but that's you know it will be impossible for to uh, right. to expect from a student to do like a one minute <laughs> animation uh, exactly just <laughs> from the scratch <laughs> uh but that's yeah. what uh, Raphael did and you can clearly see uh I can play it right now it's very short yeah and it's got a, a cool song too and yeah and you um, like I know that Raph is still is trying to like he is working on it right now like because he just wanted to finish and continue working on it like keep going on it so that's um, that's a really cool thing and I know that his style will be completely different than what someone else might do or like what you might make and that's like really cool yeah um, and now maybe jump into some of the some of the stuff that we've been doing with the lessons uh, together as well. Uh, so I decided to take your class too and um, and, uh, and do the journey with you. And I have a little different approach, uh, as, as I mentioned. Um, and it was kind of interesting to see where this is, is going to get me. But um, maybe I'll show what I did most recently because that's going to be probably the most interesting part without revealing too much of what the class is uh, doing. You can always sign up. By the way, we should mention that uh, the class is available right now. So if you go on, a web on the LearnSquared website, and if you click Motion Design, you can go in and purchase the class right here. It seems that Professional is already sold out. Is that true? Uh, yeah, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> that was quick. Uh, so you have two other options uh, still available, which is Learn Squared option, which basically will allow you to see what mentorship students are doing without being in the mentorship program, uh, which is a good alternative for anyone who would want to see other students doing work uh, and seeing if uh, how they fail and what uh, problems they face. 
and what feedback they are getting because some of that ap will apply to you as well. It's not going to be personally crafted to your use your work specifically. However, there's a lot of value into knowing what others are doing and what mistakes they are doing because sometimes you're just going to run into same problems as others do. You know, as they as they learn. A lot of us have uh, very very different approaches to how we approach homework and how we approach work in general, but and many times it just overlaps. And uh, I, I've noticed this myself as well. You know, uh, I've been when I was watching Journey uh, from 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 people and how they how they do stuff. That I was usually uh, could tell. All right, this is this is it. You know, this is. Uh, this is the problem I'm running into, and this is the fix that I was looking for. You know, that's always yeah. exciting for me. And I think like there, there's like such great value in the fact that, um, like you mentioned, like you and Raf are almost like in opposite uh, spectrums, and in, in the way you approach the homework and the way you 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 do it. And I like I feel like having being able to see like both different approaches will really help whoever's taking the class to kind of like find where they they want to do it and not being limited to trying to like exactly copy what what what's happening on the screen but being able to like okay i this the same thing can be applied in this many different ways and kind of like do it that way and see what you did and see what rafael did exactly uh let me see i have my journey file right here i'm just gonna play it surely but i can see exactly what kind of animation i'm doing here uh, i'm gonna go towards the end of it can see I'm trying to animate this character right here a little, uh, little cape being animated that's with something that's something we're gonna talk nice. about today <laughs> yeah um, I have so just, a, just, yeah. A, just a, a teaser <laughs> of what I'm doing personally I'm learning a lot this is like really difficult thing for me and there's so many things I'm doing wrong <laughs> along yeah. the way it's it's just like oh my god how am I supposed to get that fixed? But um, yeah, so for me, it's re really exciting because just going through the whole process of making mistakes and errors as I, as I work with the file and just looking at the animation itself, it seems to be the sim sim simplest thing as the cloth uh, moving around, but that already posing so many, so many issues in the way of like how I will approach that, you know? How am I supposed yeah. to... What am I supposed to do with that stuff? Like, you know, that kind of that kind of that kind of deal, because um, for me personally, when, when I work with images, I, I only think, you know, a blank image, whether it's 2D or 3D, it's just freeze motion. No, nothing, nothing is going on. I might think about what kind of motion would be there, but I never see it actually in motion. And there is a lot of things that happen when you put things in motion. You you don't realize, oh. This is not how it works, you know. This pose of a character might not be the right one when you actually right. put it in motion. <laughs> so yeah. there's a lot of aspects uh, of that. Uh, totally. There. Yeah, and like, like, and characters can be such another complete monster. But uh, but I'm I'm like so excited to see that you're still venturing into that area because um, yeah. Anyway, that'll be yeah, that'll be thing that's something that we'll be talking in a review <laughs> yeah we will we definitely will um i have a question to you um because uh, we kind of mentioned that in the very very beginning about uh you know the class itself and and the fact that you're doing the class uh, with learn squared um what did you have any any learning experience yourself while you were doing that? Like, is was there anything that you found particularly interesting when you're actually teaching that you know uh, apply to you personally? Yeah, um, yeah. No, that's a that's a very interesting question. Um, I think definitely, like, I think one of the main things about like putting all this knowledge, I guess, into a class was that I had to be conscious about kind of everything I did. And because of that, it kind of forced me to actually even question the way I did things. And I was like, wait, why do I do it this way? Or like, um, based on what I'm talking about right now, it would make more sense if I did it this way. Or mm -hmm. And that kind of like, in a way, it kind of like helped to solidify the my process. Um, 
like I didn't think necessarily I had one, but then when I started doing things and then actually noticing what I was doing, I had a pretty specific one. Um, so the fact that I kind of learned that about myself helped me to, I don't know, it helps me with like newer projects because I kind of know how the process goes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, and that, that was probably one of the biggest things. Like that self-realization of how I did things without I, I and I didn't even know I did it that way. Yeah, I mean that's that's yeah. There's, there's like there's something about teaching where, as soon as you start teaching, you you start to realize how many things you are learning along the way yourself, right? Like the fact yeah. that you yeah. have to go sort of like. So one of the one of the really really cool parts about your class and I've mentioned this you know when you when you really listen to it and you play every single chapter that is right here and for those who uh, who are uh, curious like what is the what, what is the class itself uh, this video that we're recording right now is going to be available soon after so if you've missed some parts of the class itself or the stream wasn't working for you uh, you run into some issues and problems, you're going to be able to rewatch it soon after. So don't worry about that. Uh, as you were br breaking down the concept of your four lessons, how you approach them, one of the one of the parts that I've mentioned in the very beginning is how you actually break down each of those lessons when you talk about history of animation or what got you into the motion design. I'm obviously clicking through the chapters right here. Uh, that's basically the the content of the first lesson. You can see there's a lot of a lot of concept content content right here, uh, and then even just before you go into frame by frame overview and you know uh, you you look upon the uh, Adobe Animate uh, and creating uh, GIF files and stuff like that, just that motion design breakdown part that was for me almost like listening to really insightful. Uh, audiobook about motion design itself you know the way you the way you you talk about the history and and you explain the things that are really uh, almost like really most important parts of the animation itself for yourself and then seeing all of that knowledge that you do uh, that you present right here applying it to the actual class there was like a really big nice connection there it's again like for me it was like listening <coughs> to uh to the audiobook man <laughs> yeah no that that's good to hear. Yeah, it was that part was actually quite cool because I, I I knew that I wanted to poke the brains of some of my favorite designers and motion guys. So I I kind of talk in that part of what got me into motion design and what got these people that I have admired all my life into motion mm -hmm. design. And even just being able to gather that information like kind of felt just like you. It was like, oh man, this is like this is gold. Um and I get to put it in my class. So that was <laughs> that was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I actually found more recent version of this, I think. So, yeah, there we go. I added like a little ball there. Nice. I think I played at the very end. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. I think I, I'm going to be playing it right here. Um, one thing I, I, I like, I mean, I guess this was a part of the review, but... Um, like you haven't really played with After Effects before this much, have you? No, not at all. Yeah, and and this is just your second um, lesson, like. Yeah. Um, so kind of like to give people an idea that um. Uh, different entry levels, I guess, but um, and like, yeah, I mean, one thing that kind of like what I hope the lesson and the the whole the whole course kind of forces you to do is that. You kind of start doing things one way and you kind of like learn doing it that way and then the more you learn you realize the different ways you could have done it better and you kind of like like keep learning and unlearning the stuff that you learn to make to be more efficient and like use the software better to your advantage and stuff yeah so that's that's cool yeah that's that's for sure um yeah for me it was like i really opened it i had i actually had uh after effects installed but never used. <laughs> uh, I, 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 before I started painting, I had it installed on my uh, like previous workstations. I never used it. It was usually going to Video Copilot uh, yeah. and looking at that stuff. Like, oh damn, this is cool. I want to have my eyes glowing and <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> but uh, Andrew Kramer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
but I've never, never like, ah, this is, this is too difficult. Like, cause it's, it's just like, you know, it's almost like a template of what you can do with it. Uh, but it doesn't give you, get you, uh, far enough for you to do your own things in a way. Yeah. And that's, that's something I am really interested about. Anytime I'm learning something new, I'm always interested about putting my own sort of like, um, uh, spin stamp to spin to spin to it exactly and yeah. i've never been like there's so much stuff in in terms of like how you can easily learn after effects there's just so much like y whether it's youtube or you go to lynda.com or you go to digital tutors or any other website like even i think school of motion teaches that too um there's there's just so much material out there but the problem th there's one problem with what I've noticed uh, with that material is that they give you like a blank blanket overview of the whole software in most cases. This is what it what it does. This is how it works. This is what you use it for. So you get like you get you almost become a gen generalist around the whole platform, but uh, you're not getting your focus in the right direction in, in a way, you know. Um, and when I started taking your class, that that was exactly opposite because you're you're basically focusing on explaining not just how technically to create animation within w inside of uh, After Effects, but you, you go through your thinking process and why you're doing those steps. Not just like click here to get that and then click here to get that. You're actually going through why you're clicking here in the first place, you know. Right, right. And it comes from again <coughs> connection to how you broken down in your first very first lesson lesson how you break down the history of motion design, and then almost referencing to what the breakdown of that is into the uh, the class itself, where you actually see, all right, this is how it applies and this is how it works. So. Um, yeah. For me, it was really, really, really uh, like a breaking point because that's like, all right, I know I can learn it now because now I see a purpose of learning the software. Like, it's not just like I'm learning the software just for the sake of knowing it. I learn it because I know what I can do with it, you know, and that's that's the biggest the biggest thing. I think that comes across almost all the lessons that we do here at Learn Squared is the purpose behind what do we do? And I have a question, one more question before we actually jump into QA because we're right about that time to get some of those questions that our viewers were uh, asking about. Um, mm -hmm. I actually lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> so professional. Uh, all right, that happens too. We need the soundboard. Um, yeah, the, yeah, we need the soundboard here, right, for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> Either way, actually, you know what? This is a this is a good segue. Maybe mm, I, I'm pretty sure it's gonna it's gonna come back to me some 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 somewhere along the lines when uh, when we get to uh, our viewers' questions. Andrew, you wanna run that? You gonna wanna run uh, through the questions yeah, that we've been asked so far? Now is as good a time as any to uh, get started on that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so from way back in the Twitch stream, like probably before it e we even started streaming, uh, we got a question from Art Kuki that says, will this course also be useful for other animation types like traditional 2D animation, like moving characters, et cetera, uh, and like teaching the fundamentals of animation? Right. Yeah, I mean, even though we touched about all the principles of, of animation, I mean, kind of like cater to to a less, uh, to like a non-character driven animation. Like, I do believe that all the principles are applied, but specifically when it comes to like character animation, um, there it's not really focused on that. Like I mentioned before, like, because that would be like a, to properly do it, you kind of need like a whole um, kind of course on its own. And I probably wouldn't be the best person for that, uh, even though I do some character animation myself. Um, as for 2D, uh, we do actually like in the very first lesson, like we we cover the basics of um, frame by frame animation, um, but again, that's kind of like a kind of like just like we kind of like just just touch on it uh, to kind of see the possibilities of it and use those principles to bring them into um, more specifically After Effects. So, um, I guess that that answers the question. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, another one that we've been getting asked a lot, uh, so I can't really attribute it to one person, but uh, they're asking, will it be an entry-level course or one for already experienced animators and designers? Yeah, and it kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier, too. Um, like, it is kind of made for, like, beginners and people that kind of know their, their way around After Effects a bit. Like, um, because, like, I think, like, all these principles and, like, just going through the process and watching someone go through the process independently if you've never opened After Effects, so if you've never done a motion design, or if you already have, like, like the takeaways are just as valuable for each. Um, so I would say they're completely applicable for both. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It, that's what I would say. Mm-hmm. I can um, add, maybe, another... add, may, maybe add an angle to that. You know, I personally, I'm you know obviously n- absolute noob <laughs> in animation whatsoever because I've never done animations myself. Um, my view on this stuff from the teacher perspective, because I've been teaching my own classes here on Learn Squared as well is, and from a professional, when I look back at what I've been doing uh, over the last 10, 12 years, um, it's never it's never a bad idea to go back to foundation and get to repeat it, like repeat the foundation, repeat like what exactly you're, you're doing and, and why you're doing it, you know, uh, whether it's a foundation of perspective and and uh, colors and lighting and concept art or foundation of animation itself because there's going to be one, two, or three things that are super obvious that but you might have forgotten about, you know, uh, that mm-hmm. open your eyes to um, different things and, like, maybe different approaches in animation it's because it's super easy to get, like, tunnel vision into into the work that you do, whether it's your own style that you've created along the way, or maybe you're just doing a lot of client work, and then you tend to forget things that you've been doing before, and you're not doing them anymore, because there are just like, for now, maybe for the projects you're doing right now are obsolete, but who knows, there's maybe a project right in front of you that, you know, getting back to some of the things that you've, you've been learning in the very, very beginning can be helpful, you know? That's that's, yeah. that's that, but that's my very personal uh, opinion and, and view on this. You know, it's not gonna apply to a, a everyone. So, yeah. yeah, no, I think that's a good point for sure. Um, one, this isn't a question. This is just like from me. Uh, I wanted to just remind everyone that we just uh, launched the Slack channel for this uh, course. So, if you, I'm gonna post a link in the chat. Uh, so, if you want to discuss and uh, show your homework and your progress as you go throughout the course or just chat with other students, um, feel free to join that. Uh, all members on Learn Squared get access to it. Um, but yeah, definitely join up in there so you can chat it up. Um, yep. Let me get back to some more questions. Uh, another good one that just came up from Rohidier86. It says, how much will this course be about the aesthetics of the kind of Great animation that you do, and by that I mean, will it cover style frames and compositing, etc.? Yeah. Um, so, yes, it covers that. <laughs> it covers the entire process of me doing this little project, um, especially in the last two lessons. So, like I mentioned, lesson three, we will be doing like sketching um, and then like storyboarding, developing a whole style frame. Um, so that's that's covered there, and then on the last lesson we cover mostly animation, and because I chose a fairly simple compositing type because of, I wanted to keep it simple, um, we do cover that stuff as well. But yeah, we we go from from the very beginning to the very end, so you see the entire project coming about. Mm-hmm. Right on. Um, do you do any chapters on expressions in After Effects? Yeah, yes. I saw someone ask that. I actually, I was so tempted to do that, um, but uh, we we briefly talk about like like I kind of give an introduction to expressions, so it, it's nothing super elaborate. Mostly because I, I also feel like there could be a whole different like advanced techniques that maybe we'll do in the future. Um, but we talked about it briefly, but we don't have like it's you know it's nothing super extensive. It's just the introduction to expressions. Mm-hmm. Um, so another question from one of your mentorship students says, uh, just wondering if your course goes into client briefs and how to choose the right animation style for the project. Um, 
we talked a little bit about um, a couple per like a couple projects that I've done in the past. Um, but um, can't actually remember if I actually put a real client example there or was it just personal examples. Um, but in a way, we we kind of do that for the project that we do. Like we we look the way we the way it's done. It's like when we come up with a concept which is based on a quote. We break down that quote as if we were as if it was something given us from from a client, and and based on that script that it was given to us by us, we develop the, the entire project to make it fit the so-called script. Uh, so in a way, even though it's not necessarily a real client experience, I go through it as if it was a client project um, mm -hmm. in that regard. Right on. Uh, another question that came in says. Uh, will bibliography and notes and extra documents be shared or is this just a video course? And I think I can answer that one too by just saying at the end of each lesson there's like links to all sorts of videos and, and examples and <coughs> books and all this stuff that you reference throughout the uh, the course. And yep. we, we have links to all the chapter or links in the chapter notes and everything so you guys can simply get to it straight from the lessons. Um, yeah, we're just trying to make that as easy as possible because Jorge did provide us with all sorts of awesome reference manuals and videos and stuff for, for you guys to learn the most from. Yeah, there's a um, lot of resources in there. Yeah. Um, let's see, another one. Uh, so will Adobe Animate be covered? And I know you've already said yes, but I guess... Yeah, like the, the well introduction of it. Like it's... Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Briefly, yes. Not, not nearly as any other software, like very briefly. Mm -hmm. um, so the fact that the mentorships already sold out, a bunch of people have been asking when could we possibly see a second <laughs> round of mentorships. Um, and, uh, we'll yeah. get back to them on that. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's totally up Soon. to the Jorge schedule. Soon. So yeah, we don't, we're not going to set semesters or anything like we've done in the past. Um, just as the, that's like our new policy going forward on mentorships. But yeah, when things become available, we will post about them on social media and put, post them in the newsletter. So if you guys haven't followed us on Facebook and Twitter, you can find us just slash learn squared um, and sign up for the newsletter on the homepage. Um, let's see some more stuff. Um, yeah, if I can add to that, yeah, absolutely. We, we've changed the way we operate with, within the Learn Squared with our instructors and ourselves as well, because we instruct as well. Uh, it's all about, it's all down to, uh, you know, instructors' discretion, whether they have schedule and time to run the new set of uh, mentorships. And it's never going to be semester-wise. It's always going to be, uh, you know, oh, I have time now, so I can start teaching right now. Uh, so those, I believe those uh, mentorships going to pop up every now and then. You just have to really follow what we're doing. And we, we're definitely going to be posting ahead of time um, for you guys to prepare. And we usually give uh, quite a decent amount of time for our students to make a decision and, and purchase the class itself. So mm. that's, that's about that. Yeah. Right. Um, um, so... Brainchild TV asks, um, we've talked about releasing short tip videos in the future, uh, just like as Learn Squared in general, but um, he's wondering if you will be giving out any After Effects tips or anything just beyond the course itself. Uh, we could do that, yeah. I haven't really thought about that. We will take that into deep consideration. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea, though. There's like little tips are always so handy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, a good idea. So in the chat, somebody just quickly asked, what can we do to help spread the Learn Squared movement? Uh, <laughs> I guess I'll be the champion of responding to that. But, uh, if you guys just like tweet about us, like I guess hashtag Learn Squared, uh, post on Instagram with all the awesome homework that you guys are making, post on Facebook, tell your friends about it, like any way that you guys would promote us at all, we would really deeply, deeply appreciate it. Um, like we're doing this all for you guys too. So we want you guys to make awesome work out of it. And if you do, sharing it is just going to inspire everyone. Just so I would say go forth and share the stuff that you make in any of our courses um, because we'd love to see it. And we always post, <clears throat> post stuff up on our Instagram of students' work 
and also include some in the newsletter too. So yeah, you get some extra Hell spotlight. Yeah. yeah. So let's see. I got another one. Um, they're asking specifically which books you would recommend for a motion designer who wants to improve graphical, the graphical aspect and not just the animation. Um, yeah. I, I know you covered yeah. that bit in the actual course too. But. I, I do put a, a couple <laughs> in the, um in the in the course but i think it's important to notice that like my my strength even though i do design and illustrate quite a bit um like my strength lies i like to think more on the animation side than the actual um design side of things so it's it's much more focused on the animation the the course natural is more focused on the animation than the actual design um so i don't know what i'm trying to say i guess it's you'll find much more resources regarded to the animation than the actual um, design of it. But uh, there is a bunch of a few books in there and um, some of them that I actually haven't even finished, but uh, I want to because I know they're so good. <laughs> but uh, um, if I, I, I actually, to that note, what I would say for that is like, I know that um, Ash's title design course is probably more focused on design you know than than anything else, and uh, right. and there's and you know, he's got so many good resources in there mm-hmm. that I, I would agree. I would I would point I would point to that instead of like I would look for those answers there instead of here. If that makes sense. Yeah, um, and another thing too is just like if you guys haven't already followed Jorge on Twitter, uh, you can find him at twittercom uh which I'll post a link up in the chat but you guys i'm sure jorge if you come across stuff in the future you'll absolutely post there and share it up but yeah yeah um, it's all motion related that gets posted in there <laughs> um, usually good stuff and you have your um your channel vimeo channel wine after coffee is that correct yeah that's right um I, yeah i forgot about that so yeah we um <laughs> i curate this I curate this channel, Wine for Coffee, um, that you can find it on Vimeo. And um, if you ever need more, like even as inspiration for the course and the capabilities of motion design, you can see a fairly good representation of of what motion design can look like in that channel. And even when you're bored and you just want to find good inspiration, like it's not just me that curate that site. It's like me and a bunch of other people. Mm-hmm. So that's a good place to look it up. Yeah. Another question people ask is like where you do find your inspiration, and they right. specifically cited Dribble, but I'm sure you have a lot more other places. Yeah, actually, there's like a whole little part that I talk about. So where do ideas come from? What do you do when? And um, you can you can. The, the answers are pretty obvious, but um, you can look it up in the actual course. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Sign up. There you go. <laughs> uh, I gotta say. Wink. Wine after coffee, four thousand videos, dude. You're, you're definitely not wasting your time. <laughs> well, I, it's been around for a while. Um, yeah, it's it's, you know, it's, just... a, it's an amazing resource. I I just gonna say that it's an m- amazing resource. So, uh, yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um, another question that came up early on, which I thought was really interesting, is. Uh, if you had the choice to change your career, would you choose a real school or learn via the internet, like online courses or YouTube or books? Yeah, that's uh, Learn Square. That's uh, I get. I get. <laughs> I, I get. Answers that right here on this right channel. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I mentioned it from the from the beginning. Like, um, if I would have found a course like this when I was starting, I would have, I wouldn't have thought twice, and I would have gone for this. Um, the one value that I got from school, it wasn't really any technical or any knowledge really. It was just working with my classmates. And that was like the one thing. Um, but the cool thing about Learn Squared and like pretty much any other online is that, especially in the motion design, I should say, like there's this pretty awesome community where you get all this collaborations happening like left and right. and like right now I'm working on three different collaborations and they're all like just for the love of it. And you get this sense of working with other people, even though you're not in the same room. But um, I would probably do it differently if I was living in the future past. Hmm. That meant. Um, okay. I mean, for me, it was also different because I didn't 
actually pay for school it was a scholarship so mm. i would have never been able to afford that school in a million years um so it's fairly different as well mm. yeah i can um, i can probably give you an angle from concept artist perspective too um unless yeah <coughs> unless you can afford really good one uh, that you know have teachers that are work in the industry and teach you things that are working in the industry itself not things that are already outdated and are not used by professionals uh then yeah go for it because it's the structure it's the uh it's the community that you build along uh, together with students and and stuff like that it's it it gives you that sort of like a structured way of thinking um if you have to search for things online that's a little more difficult because you have to structure your your process yourself one thing we do right. here with learn squared and one of the reasons why me ash and andrew decided to kickstart this uh this platform is not only just to give you the best uh, what we think is the best uh from the instructors we have but also to give you our experiences as we learn you know um one of the one of the main aspects is the apprentice uh journey which is basically you know me concept artist taking a motion design course it's just absolutely something i've never done before um but the inside of seeing a professional from a from a student perspective if i was a student like much much like you said like if if you had some resources before you would just take them uh with the heart like with, with a heartbeat like damn that that's that's exactly what i was looking for for mm -hmm. me seeing th so when i was growing up to be an artist <laughs> When I was looking up for the best in the industry, like it was for me, it was natural to think that all of those best in the industry never make mistakes and they are gods of, of art. They just, you know, when they came out out of the womb, they were already making concept art for Star Wars. Uh, so for me, it was just simple and straightforward. And when I was drawing, doing really shitty work, I was like, ah, oh, this looks horrible. Um, <laughs> I, I never had like this, this, this thought that, you know, how on earth am I going to get up there? You know, I had to think in a very different way to get there. It was just like the resilience that you built along the way. But seeing professionals fail and <laughs> doing it in the way you fail yourself, you know, when I, when I learn from, 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 from Jorge, uh, the mistakes you're going to see if you take this class uh, and you will see the mistakes that I make, you'll be like, man, that guy is an idiot. <laughs> because <laughs> uh, they make so many stupid mistakes but that's how I learned personally and 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 that's that like for me seeing that seeing that professionals do make errors they do make mistakes they learn the exactly same way as others like students that's that's what mm -hmm. for me is really important and that's one of the reasons why we started the platform in the shape and the form as, as it is right now so it's not just the video lessons it's actually <coughs> the journey of professionals and students that comes with it you know it's not just like oh here's your video tutorial go take it and do your stuff you know that's that's just like there's so much of it already you know mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i think the journey aspect is really important in this because and and funny enough uh as i'm teaching and, and learning it's it's interesting to see how students affect our work as well. You know, seeing what students learn and how they approach the things that you teach <coughs> uh, makes it even more interesting because I personally have learned so much from our, my students already. You know, I mean, there's the things that the way I teach, not only the way I teach, but also things that I've never considered in my personal work just because some student mentioned it during the class. I was like, wow, this is this is really important and really, we're really powerful. So, um, yeah. to look back to the subject. Yeah. I mean, this is your platform, man. Learn squared. <laughs> this is where, <laughs> this is where we are. I mean, we're in the very beginning of our road to make this platform as, as best as possible. Uh, but I can, you know, for me, there's a lot of lessons that I'll, I want to take myself right here on this platform because they're great. And it's just like I don't know, I don't have time. <laughs> the only reason I what I'm not why I'm not doing it. So um, yeah, there's we could make a, a whole podcast about why you know why you mm -hmm. should take 
uh, online lessons versus uh, versus uh, regular uh, school. You know, that's that could be a separate stream. But yeah, let's move on to another question because we could go yeah. on forever. <laughs> <laughs> Um, another one that came up is, could you recommend any plugins for animating in After Effects? Um, I refuse to do that. <laughs> 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 no, the main thing is like, I'm actually like, um, I'm, uh, when it comes to animation, like I'm, I'm quite the spokesman for like, you know, like get your animation right from your fingers and like learn how to do it the probably what would be the longer way but um mm -hmm. animation it's all about how it feels and a plugin will not help you make it feel it might make you make it faster but it won't make you make it feel better um so that that's when it comes like to like actually where you put your keyframes on how they move type things but um in terms of like plugins that make your life easier that are not necessarily directly you know they don't make your eases faster or whatever mm -hmm. um there is um, there's quite a few, and I do talk about uh, some some that I um, use um, throughout the throughout the class, but um, they're mostly just little things that help your life just be faster. There's like, you know, I I can't believe I lived without the FT toolbar until like last year, um, because it just helps you to like kind of like automate a lot of process that you might do all the time, mm. or what was the other one that I use pretty much every day? I think it's uh, easy, easy uh, copy, easy copy or something. Basically, just you can copy values of one keyframe that you made into another one, which I use a lot. So you're still making all the values, but it just makes the copying faster. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a couple of others that I mentioned to the class, but those are kind of like, like the main thing I would say, like the plugin won't make your animation be better. Yeah. I still haven't started using FT Toolbar, and I feel like an idiot for it. <laughs> oh man, I felt like such. A, everybody was like, "Oh yeah, I had this thing in my FT Toolbar." I'm like, I don't even use Andrew, it. Andrew, you, you're <laughs> you're a motion designer too, right? Yeah, that's that's my jam. A lot of Jorge people... was a huge inspiration for me to get started in it too. So it's been oh, like stop it. No, a lot of people don't <laughs> even know that, but our our Chipotle life, Andrew, does motion design too. <laughs> Right, someone posted his reel earlier. Yeah, I'm going to play yeah. it right now. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> there yeah, you go. I, I, like I was saying before, her, his work has been, like even when I was starting out, not that I started much later than he did, it was just a huge inspiration. Seeing all this crazy work being done by one guy, I was like, damn, I got to step my game up. Step it's pretty much between up. like you and Andrew Kramer. <laughs> That's like <laughs> how I got started doing After Effects. I like your <laughs> subliminal message in your demo reel. Hire me. <laughs> Thank you. I've actually I've had like funny conversations with people who I've had interviews with too, like that worked, like <laughs> that made me interested in hiring you. Wait, 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 wait. I saw another one. I'm gonna try to pause it in the right time. Uh, quick tip for anybody who uses Vimeo: if you do shift arrow keys once you're paused, you can actually change the frames. Oh, what? I didn't know that. What? Boom. <laughs> Damn, that's a good tip. I would, because I would always end up downloading the video and then opening it quick time and going frame by frame. Yeah, I know. I did that too until um, Marcus Ecker told me about it. Um, Another yeah. script that I've been using a lot is uh, Reposition Anchor Point. You ever use that one? Oh, I am. Um, I heard about this one. I it's think so Sean convenient. Yeah. Yeah, just like automatically centering like a shape layer or something that the anchor point yeah. is just like so Whatever helpful. Yeah, there's so many <laughs> things. Um... <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there we go. That's smart. <laughs> That's so awesome. Real, how long it took Andrew to make that frame. <laughs> <laughs> That's that pretty good. Serial at the bottom there at the end said like if you actually type that into a decoder, it ends up saying, please hire Andrew Harlick. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, yeah, someone mentioned motion beat. I know a lot of people that use motion um, motion from on my graph. Um, I've actually probably used it once or twice. Um, there's a lot of like that's the thing like i know a lot of 
motion people that um they know all the most amazing like time savers out there um um it's awesome but like i mentioned earlier those are kind of like secondary and i mean i wish i used more of them to make my life easier sometimes but at the end it's it's kind of what you make independent of like the software is not like i, I say that so many times during the class it's, the software is not gonna like knowing the software better or knowing better shortcuts is not going to make your animation better necessarily. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. There's something about, you know, uh, plugins and shortcuts and whatnot. As soon as you change your machine, like let's say you update to a new workstation, you have to go through the whole process of like, this is the shortcuts, this is everything. What if you go mm. for a meeting with a client, like, can you show me something and you want to do it like, oh, I'm missing all my plugins. I cannot use Photoshop <laughs> without them. You don't want to yeah. be in that situation either, you know? Uh, something my uh, my buddy from Naughty Dog mentioned. Uh, I think it was Christopher Desse. Uh, he's a he's a artist, three uh, D artist over there. Uh, he said like he doesn't use any uh, shortcuts if he if he doesn't have to or like oh. UI changes or whatnot because for that reason like what if I want to show some someone how I do that stuff on his workstation. I, it's gonna be pointless because I don't have my shortcuts and everything. So, yeah, that's a that's an interesting point actually because for when I was going through like all my like times I go through After Effects or any other software, I go and put I like reset all my workspaces so everybody can follow along um, to see what you can do with the very base of the software. Mm. Um, yeah. As you guys are uh, answering questions, I'm just you know browsing through whether it's uh, your real or your website yeah, yeah. or uh, Behance. You have a lot of really, really intense, interesting stuff there, dude. Yeah, really that one was stuff. quite quite unique, actually. That one, um, yeah, like unique. all the characters, was done by Enrique a Barone, who's like probably the most talented character animation I know, animator that I know. And um. Mm. Yeah, that one, was, that one was pretty crazy. But there's some other cool projects in there. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot you can do with motion. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Su I'm a super super duper excited, dude. This is uh, this is going to be this is going to be huge for me. I think. As an apprentice, I just I just feel lucky. I can just like, oh, I can just be apprentice if I want to. <laughs> uh, I, I feel very lucky about that because you know. Um, I would die, f die for it, you know, like get, get to know that stuff. Damn. Uh, it's super, super important, especially for what I want to do with it. It's going to, I'm going to be blasting that on social media as I learn, as, as I go from now on. So uh, you're going to see where this is going. Yeah. Cool. Um, I guess we could answer like one or two more questions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so another question, I mean, constantly has been asked is what experience level do you need and i'm not even gonna bother making you answer that again so it's accessible from like the beginning i guess is the idea yeah um, you don't have to know anything to to learn yeah um but yeah so i guess let's see another one that popped up is but yeah i think, think like like again it's it's not just for beginners like yeah any if if you want to understand the process of motion you know as if it was like from start to finish, I think that's super valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and plus just like seeing Jorge's entire process is so interesting for anyone who's familiar with his work. Like just from a personal standpoint, it's it's so awesome to see like how different artists approach something that I've been used to doing on my own. Like seeing somebody else do it from literally A to Z is really, really awesome and inspiring. I was about to mention that, you know, the fact that... Uh you're getting sort of like a, uh, an, a bird eye of what, what is the process that Jorge is going through, like the, his thinking process. So tools might, might be something that the tools themselves might be something, ah, oh, this is already everything I know, you know. Uh, there might be one or two things that you might learn from it if you're a professional from the tools perspective. But in most cases, it's pretty much with any other classes. When you take a class, you usually know a lot of tools already. Uh, and from a professional po point of view, uh, 
if I'm learning from someone on the craft that I already do, uh, then I look for his perspective on things rather than how he uses tools, you know? Because that's usually mm. much more interesting for me. Tools are just tools, you know? That I, that's something I can learn from uh, a, as a professional from, from any video. But the thinking process of a person that I'm following, that I want to learn from, is a totally different subject, so. Totally. Yeah. Uh, so another question I just saw pop up from MoGraph Perez de la. Sorry if I mispronounced that. <laughs> Does that. Do you think that working on your own makes you um, access less interesting pro projects, like since you are not within a bigger structure or a bigger group and also? Yeah. Like, well, it's kind of early yeah. to tell. I've only been doing it for a few months now. I'm, well, actually, I, I, I was kind of doing both at one point, kind of like freelancing after hours. Um, I think. I don't know, actually. I don't know if I can say yes, because since I'm working at home, I almost have more freedom to take on different projects um, instead of, I don't know, taking the projects that, that the studio had to take, if that makes any sense. Um, mm. So if anything, it's not necessarily that it makes you give you more access to more interesting projects, but you can be more picky, I guess. And um, take projects that might not have any budget, but you know, it's going to be awesome. So you sacrifice whatever, and then you take next, next time you take another bigger project that is not as awesome, but kind of helps you take the other project. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. The one thing is like, it, you know, it's definitely different working on your own than working in a studio because it's, you know, you, 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 you can kind of get lonely, I guess. Um, <laughs> but, um, that, you know, yeah. I just, I just Mache knows all about that. He never even <laughs> leaves his house. I am a <laughs> hobbit. I'm literally a hobbit. I have a hairy, hairy feet. I'm three feet tall. <laughs> um, and I live on the ground. Never see sunlight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I agree with you, though. Yeah, um, totally. Yeah, One so more question? One more. Um, yeah, so, I mean, another one that came up again is, do you use expressions in your animations? Uh, I don't, it's not necessarily related to the course, I guess, asking if it's covered, but I guess in general, do you use expressions? Yeah, I think I mentioned, I, I think I kind of answered it already, um, mm. that uh, when I'm actually playing with the actual curves of animation on the keyframes, I don't use any expressions. Mm. For me, it kind of personally kind of ruins it because you can't control it as much as you want. Right. Um, and there's actually like the whole section when I'm uh, when I'm talking about like doing a little basic bounce in After Effects that just because it's mathematically accurate, which is what expressions usually do, doesn't mean it's good. Um, a lot of the times you kind of need to tweak what will be mathematically accurate to make it fit the design. Um, yeah, because I know a lot of people that like they use expressions to create the perfect bound, you know, the the perfect bounds based on this weight, and and then you look at it, and I'm like, sure, it might look perfect, but it it doesn't look good, you know, it doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. So I I like to use expressions for making my life easier and creating more complex comping and connecting different things. Like I do use expressions for a bit in my projects, but they're usually not directly related to the actual movement of things. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, I guess that kind of cover we like all the questions that are being asked are kind of repeats of what we've already covered. And <laughs> just to reiterate what Mache was saying earlier, um, this stream will be available after it's over. We're going to make it public on YouTube. So yeah, you, uh, can all check it out. Uh, we'll link to it at the end of the trailer too on the site. So once you watch through it, you can just find a link to it there or find us on YouTube. Um, and it's gonna be posted shortly, as far as I remember. Yeah, it's just gotta export from Twitch and process on YouTube. So yeah, might be like an app. So that's gonna be available Sweet. for whatever reason. If you missed any of this conversation, you joined late, or uh, you know you had trouble with the Twitch stream today. Whatever the reason was, you can still rewatch it and get all the all the juices out of it uh, as much as you want. So, yeah, I think it's a good uh, moment to wrap it up. I think uh, we went through quite a lot of questions. We went through what the course is more or less about without saying too much. 
we are leaving a little bit of that <laughs> awesomeness for you guys to discover. For those who sign up and join the course, we are doing a staggered release, which basically means that the first lesson is already available. All the lessons are completed. They're going to be released uh, every week, so you, you can ease into all of the lessons uh, as you go with your homeworks. Uh, we encourage everyone to post into Students Gallery. Right now, there's obviously no work in there, simply because we just released the course. And no one had a chance to actually do the homework yet. Um, however, Be we the do. First. <laughs> yeah, we do encourage to post on the students' gallery because every now and then we have our instructors on the Twitch stream, and we do homework reviews time to time. So it might might just so happen that even though you're not in mentorship, one of your submissions might be under an eye of an instructor. So. Highly encouraging uh, for for students to do that. Uh, you can sign up anytime right now. As you can see, professional is already sold out before we even finish the stream. So that's that's we're obviously grateful and thankful for our community for yeah, that. Yeah, that's awesome. And but you can still sign up for uh, Learn Squared and Basic, which means you get access. Uh, and maybe Andrew, you can break it down really quickly. What what yeah, are the differences? Um, the basic. Access is just going to give you exactly what it says. It's the basic um, access to all the video tutorials that Jorge created for the course. Um, this might be similar to the access you get from other platforms that just are just straight up uh, tutorials, um, whereas the Learn Squared package gives you access to seeing the Apprentice Journeys, which is where we're going to cover uh, Rafael Mayani's progress throughout the course, as well as Mache once he finishes up his uh, it, like entire process through the course, uh, which I guess will probably be coming in a couple weeks. Um, you also get to download project files, and you get to watch all of the unedited raw videos from the uh, course if there were any edits or sped up stuff. Um, and you also get access to the mentorship archive, which will let you see everyone else who is in the mentorship uh, as they learn. So it's basically like a, a you get to watch the classroom of a bunch of different students learn the same stuff as you are. So get to uh, see their process and what kind of feedback they are getting on their animation and hopefully apply it to uh, the stuff that you're working on to improve your craft. Um, but yeah, if new professional mentorship seats open up uh, anytime soon, we will be posting about it on social media and our newsletter. Uh, so be sure to follow us and subscribe and you guys share this tweet it post it whatever like we would again really really appreciate it any kind of uh support you would give us would be so so appreciated uh, especially as the course is just uh launching because that's the that's the hot time to uh get everything sold and going so yeah it would mean a lot to us if you guys shared it um i guess mache if you want to close it out yeah That's... let's uh let's wrap it up here or hey thank you for your time here and uh thank you for being a part of the iron squared family obviously uh, i'm yeah, really excited for you. that one because again it's already like i ha i just have started it and i already see how i can apply it to my professional work so for me it's a big one from from uh, an eye of a concept artist just an eye of a concept artist looking into motion design that's something i always been excited about and now this is a part of, of Learn Squared platform. So I'm super, super excited. Uh, yeah. So again, you can watch the stream again. If, if you missed any of the things we've been talking about, feel free. It's going to be posted up. Uh, I think we're going to blast it out on uh, social media for sure. Uh, and it's going to be available in that trailer, like what, right after this trailer ends, I believe. Right, Andrew? You'll be mm -hmm. able to actually see uh, this stream as well. So anyways... Thanks, guys, for uh, for being with us. Uh, there was quite a lot of you and quite a lot of questions. Super exciting. Thanks for everyone who decided to join live. And if you're watching it afterwards, thanks for, you know, bearing through the whole stream and uh, the whole video. And uh, I will we'll see you next time, guys. And uh, again, super exciting times. Yeah, thanks, guys. Exciting. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Have a good day. <laughs>